Hello, my Jason O, and welcome to my anime review for Chika the Coffin Princess. And so, this series is a 2014 anime series based on the 2010 light novels by Ichiro Sakaki, with illustrations by Nami Ku uh, ATK. And so, this series follows Toru Akura, who is a 20 year old uh, retired soldier meandering through life. Uh, now that the war has ended, is five years after um, the uh, taboo Emperor Arthur Gaz is uh, uh, taken out by the eight heroes. He encounters Chaika Trabat, a 14-year-old sorceress carrying a coffin uh, with hopes in finding uh, meaning in his life. Uh, the two travel uh, with Toru's adopted sister, Akari, um, through um, this adventure, um, the whole goal of this adventure, at least, is to gather the remains of the uh, Tabur Emperor uh, so that Chaika, his daughter, uh, can you know, provide a funeral uh, for him. That's the whole basis of it. However, of course, gathering the remains of a person called the Tabu Emperor, the guy who was basically the um, sort of source of this 500 year uh, war, at least 500 years of war, um, is. Uh, not a good thing for many people out there. Um, they it, it it brings up a lot of issues of bringing up war and peacetime and what the characters uh, that have lived through war have experienced during peacetime. Since uh, Toru is a saboteur, uh, he um, sort of uh, he got a lot of employments during wartime. You know that was a big uh, moment for him. But now it's peacetime. He's very much struggling uh, for work, and so. Um, having this sort of dichotomy here is a very interesting one in this series, along with this idea of determinism, you know, of fate versus free will, of whether um, Chaika should uh, gather these remains, you know, whether it's her destiny to do so, or whether she's doing this of her own volition. That's um, very much an issue brought up from the beginning of the first episode where um, there's this mention of her being a tool uh, to gather the remains. Is she doing this because she is destined to do so? Or is she doing this because she wants to? Alongside that, you have Toru, who is employed by uh, Chaika, but is he doing this because he is just... Be you know, do this for his employer in Chaika, or is he doing this because he wants to, or he has some sort of sort of affection towards Chaika, which is uh, teased a bit here and there throughout the whole entire series. The director of this anime series is uh, Soichi Masui, who is also directed Scrap Princess, which is also another work uh, from this light novel uh, author. Um, so the, a lot of similarities uh, I've you know, been told, or at least have read, uh, come from Scrap Princess as well. Uh, just some sort of surface level sort of things. There's some differences here and there. Uh, you can look up on yourself whether you're familiar with the Scrap Princess uh, series. But for Chaika, uh, this is a well-structured narrative in this fantasy world, a uh, very lived-in fantasy world. Uh, if you're tired of all the isekai or the trapped in a video game type uh, fantasy world genre, if you're just looking for a standard uh, fantasy genre, this is definitely the anime for you. The characters, for the most part, are very well written as well. Uh, you understand their motivations. Every twist and turn that does come about with the characters do make sense uh, with the characters that are established. Uh, the only the disappointing thing about some of the characters is that Akari, I think she's a very underdeveloped character. She's kind of just... Um, sort of dumbed down to her um, sort of quirky characteristics of her be a badass fighter, but other than that, she's also very uh, affectionate towards her uh, brother. Again, they're adopted, and so I guess that's their excuse there of this whole sort of incest angle, at least, but still, that's a very much a troubling sort of thing to what could have been a really cool character. Uh, the opening theme does show them being badasses, but those badass qualities are very light and mostly go to Toru uh, since he is uh, one of the main characters along with Chaika as well. They get the more spotlight moments and one of the more uh, bigger moments uh, of all these big set pieces that do come about in the series. I do think the wrong moments between Chaika and uh, Toru do sort of hurt the series a bit. I think they're very unnecessary and they're very cliche as well. I don't really like this idea that, you know, um, Toru is falling on Chaika because he has his crush on her. I really like the idea of uh, this sort of, you know, like I said before, the determinism, this whole free weight, free, uh, free will versus fate, uh, sort of model here, where, uh, you have Chaika and Toru going on this mission and, um, gathering these remains, encountering all these enemies, encountering all these friends and foes along the way, and whether this 
is all leaning up to this big thing, or whether you know, a Chaika truly wants to give her father a proper burial, a proper funeral, or is she uh, trying to start up a war? Is Toru trying to start up another war again? You know, bring back war time so he can sort of have existence within his life. You'll feel some sort of, um, I guess, meaning in his life other than just going around, taking all these odd jobs, uh, not be a saboteur as he was trained to do since he was a kid. But I will say this though, um, this is more of a character uh, sort of anime. The whole plot itself, you would have to sort of watch all two seasons, all 22, 23 episodes uh, to really get out the shocking truths uh, of what Chaika and her father, all the other twists and turns revolving around that stuff there. Um, there's lots of twists and turns. Um, some of it kind of makes sense. Um, it's when you go to get to the end, it all really um, sort of culminates into uh, what Chaika is, what her beliefs are, and what her uh, motivations come down to the end and what she has to do uh, in order to uh, save the day, essentially, her and Toru. Um, the ending itself is pretty satisfying. There's some uh, interesting implications coming up about here, uh, but still, for the most part, Chaika is... Um, a very interesting character. She's very moe. She's this gothic Lolita type, uh, especially the way she's dressed. She speaks in very broken Japanese, uh, which I guess is supposed to be quirky and cute and very moe as well. And so that's a lot of her character here. Uh, but she does uh, play a part in the action uh, at times uh, when she's not captured. I guess her magic abilities sort of hinder her uh, action abilities. And so that's the whole way they write her as a very weak sort of character since Toru is the more stronger character of uh, everything everyone here. One of the side characters, we'll get into her uh, since it's a bit spoilery uh, stuff with her character, but once she gets introduced, once she gets part of the Toru and Chaika group, uh, she is very OP and kind of kills attention for the series itself. You know, with the antagonist being the Gillette squad, uh, the, the squad that is trying to sort of maintain peace and, you know, trying to stop Chaika from gathering the remains. They are very weak antagonists, uh, in my opinion, anyway. They're very poorly written in, and they are very one note for the most part, except for the leader itself, mostly because of some things that happen with him. And some of the supporting characters, some interesting things do happen to them, but they the writing doesn't really um, develop devolve into them a lot more into their characters. Maybe the light novels do since they have more time to do so, but for the anime, it doesn't really uh, go in depth on these characters as as much as I would like, and which makes them weak antagonists, uh, creating uh, not much tension throughout the whole entire series. You don't really get this sense that you know Chika or Toru or even Akari are in any sort of real danger or or any threats to their lives will come upon them. Uh, just more of whether they'll gather their remains or not is the real true quest uh, for our heroes. But overall, this is a pretty fun anime series with all the quirky moe sort of things going on with Chaika and all the character relationships and the comedy itself is pretty fun. And so for overall grade for the series, I'm going to give this one a B minus. Again, if you're really interested in a fantasy world, uh, genre anime that is outside the isekai or traps in another world type um, anime series is definitely the series for you uh, if you're just looking for a standard fantasy worlds where very lived in fantasy worlds uh, but the animation itself is pretty standard nothing too outrageous nothing too uh, standing for the soccer gun nerds uh, but also nothing too egregious or anything too bad that really uh, uh, takes away from this series itself there's more of the writing of the characters and the antagonists uh, that really uh, hurt the series for me and so have you already seen Chaika the Coffin Princess what are your thoughts on the series in the comment section down below. Also make sure to like, share, and subscribe as well. And with subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell so you get notified when I post videos on this channel. Thank you for watching my anime review for Chaika the Coffin Princess. Hope you guys have a nice day. Bye-bye.